when we don't agree with other people. We are not perfect, and so are all the people around us. Actually, all of us are a work in progress. And sometimes disagreements and conflict may arise among us, be it in our family, in our group of friendship, among our classmates, our colleagues at work, with our neighbors, or just people on social media. But today I want to give us four suggestions on how to handle disagreements and conflicts when they arise among us. The first one is that don't talk behind the person. It is very easy and actually it's the most natural thing to do to share your frustration behind the person that you have a conflict with. But chances are that doing so will only backfire against you and cause tension in your family or in your relationship or in your shared community of friends. And actually doing it, the Bible calls it, is an act of sowing seeds of discord and enmity. Think about this. You have a problem with one person, but you want to talk about it with another person. So you're bringing a third person. The third person brings a fourth one. The fourth one brings two more people. And before you know it, the problem that will have been solved between two people has now brought in the whole network of friends or church or community. Actually, this is not the biblical approach. Number two, be honest to the person's face. I know it is not easy, but it is always the best approach. Conflicts are hard. Conflicts are difficult. Nobody wants conflict. Everybody wants to avoid them even when they occur. But the Bible way is, according to Matthew 18, Jesus tells us from verse 15, that if your brother does something wrong to you, go to him. Talk alone to him and tell him what he has done. If he listens to you, you will have kept your brother as a friend. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two others with you to talk to him. Then two or three people will hear every word and can prove what was said. If he does not listen to them, tell the church. If he does not listen to the church, treat him as one who does not believe in God or as bad as a tax collector. But I want to say this. This should be planned and you should think through how you will approach this other person with respect, with grace, and with truth. You should address the issues which concern you about the person directly, and you should certainly own anything you need to improve. There's always a chance that the problem is more with you as a person than even the other person. And if you discover that you are on the wrong, you should be humble enough actually to apologize. And also, it's good to be aware that it's not always that when you share with the other person that they will realize that they are on the wrong or there is a problem. Uh, it's not, we see things differently. You may think that you have an issue with somebody, but the other person does not even see any problem or does not see whether they have offended you or they have done anything that warrants you to talk to them. But we should do our best from our side and leave the rest to God and the other person. And number three, find a place to vent. Surround yourself with some people with whom you can be truly and brutally honest. It is probably best that these people should be outside the shared circle of network of, of the person that you, are, you have a problem with. But you need a place to share your heart. If you keep emotions in your heart too long, then you will wither or even die emotionally. But I will say again, be selective who you share with, but also be courageous enough to be vulnerable to share what concerns you with a few, and I will emphasize here, a few selected and trusted people. This will keep you from burning out in your relationship or in your ministry. And lastly, number four, live when it is unhealthy. Again, this is hard. But you need to be mature enough and responsible enough to consider the bigger picture. You will never be best friends with everyone. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15, the Bible says that God has called us to live in peace. There is time for everything under the sun. 
the wisest man who ever lived, tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there is time to be born and there is time to die. There is time to plant, there is time to uproot, there is time to kill and there is time to heal. There is time to weep and time to, 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 to laugh. There is time to scatter and time to gather stones. There is time to embrace and there is time to refrain from embracing. Actually, there is time to search and there is time to give up. There is time to tear up and there is time to mend. There is time to love and there is time to hate. There is time to be silent and there is time to speak. There is time for war and there is time for peace. But I know that the most challenging thing here is to know the timing. When do you know that it's the time to live or it's the time to stay? But however, we need to have these hard and honest conversations and considerations. And when we do this, Romans chapter 12, verse 17, the Bible advises us that we, should, we do not repay anyone evil for evil. We should be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. But even as we consider this, it is wise also to be open to living when the environment or the relationship is toxic, it is harmful, it's unproductive, and it's unhealthy. But I will say this towards the end. Do much consultation and ask the Lord for wisdom before you take any step. 